Gamer 34 here. So it's been a while since I've made a video, so I wanted to come back and talk to you guys about this program counter I made a long time ago, right after I finished putting out that other program counter video, but I just didn't have time to make it. So this is cool because I worked with some other people. I worked with uh, these guys here, Lord Capo and Coyarno, to help design this. So it is a 3 by... let's read it here. It's 12 by 3 uh, by 2. So it's 36 uh, blocks per layer. Each layer is 2. So uh, we have... it's... Uh, what is that? 72. 72 blocks per bit. So, but this thing is special, or why this thing is special is it's able to count up and down whether no matter where you are. So the way this works is this is actually an XNOR on the back of this hooked up into our clock line. And the XNOR, is, one of its inputs is the output of the PC. And the as you can see the output goes through just like this because here's the output line. The output goes through in one, into one of the XORs and the other input is the up or down line right here which goes in to this and then outputs. And so this is actually how you would branch if you wanted to. You would press this button to branch and it would do all your branching. So let's, uh, and this, this here is the clock line. So if I were to go ahead and leave this in the up position and show you that we're at 9 right now, right there, and then I were to clock it right here off that, now we're at 10. I'll clock it one more time. We're at 11. Now it should count to 10. Now it should count to 9. 8. 7. 6. Okay. Now what if we want to branch? Well, we can give it, we'll say branch to 15. And we can do this. That'll branch. The one thing, however, that you cannot do is if you have that down and you try to branch to an address, it will not work. So you need to make sure that this is in the up position for that to work. Just like that. So that is one thing to keep note on this. So this is a program counter that can branch and increment and decrement. And so you could ask yourself why is that useful. Well it's cool for trying to manipulate uh, vectors, or not, not vectors, but like pixels on a screen. Like uh, you want to increment or decrement where you are currently at, at a placeholder. Like, and then you could have an X and a Y. So you can increment or decrement Y and X and then uh, change your position on the screen relatively easily. Um, so this is what I was using previously to do that. I was using a, it's called a uh, carry look, what are they called? It's a, yeah, it's a carry look ahead, but it's a form of carry look ahead that's optimized for Minecraft. So it's cut CCA, uh, cut carry edition or something like that, cancel carry edition. Um, and it's a Minecraft optimized op uh, algorithm. I didn't design the adder, I just used it for what I needed to do. And so basically, is it has the same options increment, decrement, or branch, and it's huge compared to this 3 by 12 one per bit. And so, uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and show you guys how to design this. Alright guys, so first thing to do is we're gonna need to build the core of this. So the core consists of the branch input, which goes through like that. Oh, no, my battery goes like this. We need to put that into that. So here's our T flip flop right here. Oh, whoops. Don't know what I just did there. Um, and then we're going to need to power into this somehow, and to do that, we're going to do this. And so now we're going to work on the next one. Alright, so we're going to place a block right here like I did. So just come down, do this. We're going to replace this with one of those. And we're going to like that. Now our 
this right here needs to come through like this, and this will go into our input of our XOR. So first, let's build another one of these. We'll make a 2-bit one for demonstration purposes. That needs to be blocked off just like that. And so how this will work is we can then run wires like this. To control this one, I guess for this bottom one can uh done like this because we want to disable those from working so we're going to go ahead and bam there's our input number one and this is to disable these inputs from or the branches from going through so now that we have that hooked up we can work on the actual XNOR that will be designed to act as the back feed to tell this what number to go to next. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, is, I've already done it on the bottom bit off camera, but now we got to do the same thing on the, this part right here. We need to just place a half slab, a block, a block, another half slab, and then this will come up like that. And then we put a repeater here, just like that. Now we will actually start putting the logic of the XOR in. This is just starting to hook up some of the inputs. Alright, so I skipped ahead a few steps and built the bottom layer, and I will explain to you everything that's going on as I reconstruct it on the top. So first, what we need to do is having the output of the Tifa flop come into this common line right here, as this top one does. We then need to take an output from here, and we only want to allow it to go through we, we want to be able to invert the output, so that's why we need to be able to toggle whether we do that or not. So this is an XOR allowing it to go, or this is an AND gate that's going to be allowed to work under certain conditions. We're going to put this block here, just like that. And we're going to have a comparator here. This block gets power from here, from this line and goes down into this comparator but it doesn't really it also goes across into this comparator here through this repeater so you can see how one goes directly into the comparator as an input and the other goes into the comparator as a toggle then you'll notice since this one is going into the comparator as an input the other comparator has to be put into as a toggle which means the input to this one needs to come from this line here. So we're actually going to build this up. Just like this. Place this here. And you can see how now that's getting power. <clears throat> okay. But now we need to look on this back side here because you guys need to be able to build this whole thing. So it comes through here. This is what the back side looks like so far. This is what the middle side looks like. Okay, so now on to actually hooking up. Okay, so this part's actually relatively easy. You can see this one's done here at the bottom. So all we need to do is bring this up here. And now the output of... Uh, how do I mark it? I'll, I'll use... Uh, the output of that right there with the output of that right there are on the same bus and they hop down here, go onto this, which means it can't come down to here, and instead it comes up to this bit here. Cool. So now we know if we want it to increment, this line needs to be on all the time. So if we need it to increment and that line needs to be on all the time, then instead we can probably just do this. And so now, by default, the thing will increment because it has power going through that line all the time. So now we need to hook up the top one, and it's done the same way. We do this by bringing that out like this, and up, 
Oh, whoops, that's right. This needs to be made into a s slab, I believe. Oh no. This comes down like that. Ah, and then we put slab here. Just like that. And so for stacking purposes, you could put a slab here if you so desire to. And so now we need a clock powering into this line here, and that'll be our first bit. And so this is our toggle line, or for our up and down. This is our enable our branch input, which we can, oh, oh wait, let's see that spot, I'll put this here. So that'll be allowing branch. And then now we need a clock. So we can come down here. And do one of these guys. Boom. Like this. Just like that. Just like that. Whoops. And uh, doesn't really matter what you put on that there. Okay. Anyway, now for demonstration purposes, um, where I have, uh, I guess we'll use pistons. <laughs> All right. So we have zero zero one uh, zero one. Oh, something's not right here. Alright, give me one second. Alright guys, I was able to fix the problem, and the issue was right here. So we had this hooked up here, and we actually have this guy here that needs to get power. So we bring this down like this, put a redstone dust inside, go like that, and now we power into it like that, and now all of them are getting power. So now if we were to clock this, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then we have one one. And then it resets back to zero zero. So now if we wanted to count downwards, we would toggle the sign like that. And now we'd start from zero zero and go to three. Then go to two. And then it would go to one. Go to zero. And go back to three, of course. And everything's synced, all the outputs are synced. And then of course, you can also take a branch input and then um, you need to make sure you're upwards like this and then you can go ahead and clock it and it took that branch input of two and put it to the output so this is now fully stackable upwards same exact thing as this guy right here and this guy right here <laughs> so uh, if you like this video if you found this useful uh, Please subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep uploading as much as I can because, you know, I'm a busy college student. All right, take it easy, guys.